HPSs are probably running at 32, 34. Okay? Want me to turn the fan down? No, no, you're... Okay, you're okay. So, um, this, this was a, just a recently harvested cycle. What we do is we produce marijuana in a cyclical fashion. Within each one of these rotations, we might have anywhere between five to seven varieties. Once we put them into clone form, that'll become the next load of plants. And this is where we vegetatively build the plants. And that's, this is all normal gardening stuff. This is all horticulture. It's not, it's not in any way different than in any other industry in that respect. Unless, of course, that industry is outside of the state of California, in which case it would be considered illegal. In fact, marijuana is still technically illegal in the United States. So why are states like New York trying to legalize medical marijuana? It seems like it's more trouble than it's worth. In the fall of 96, uh, several states, uh, through referendum, adopted medical marijuana legislation. And when I read about that, uh, it just immediately made sense to me. And I decided uh, to draft and introduce a bill in New York. Almost 15 years later, Gottfried's efforts have nearly paid off. A version of his medical marijuana bill was introduced in the New York Senate in February 2011. It's called S-2774. But since February 2011, the bill has been stalled in the Senate's Health Committee for over a year. The obstacle in the Senate is is to get enough Republican senators willing to support the bill uh, to enable us to have 32 votes to get it passed. According to New York pro-marijuana activists, the public's perception of the drug is changing. It does smell like weed, doesn't it? Yeah. What do you guys think about them trying to legalize medical marijuana? They should legalize marijuana in New York. No. I think no, marijuana no. should be legal, period. I'm the oh, big cat boy. Gotta legalize marijuana. And as New York looks to become the 17th medical marijuana state, activists know they must learn from states that first enacted legislation, like California. Well, there's these holes. To find out about these holes, I went to California to investigate their medical marijuana situation for myself. But the end is near. Sure enough, according to California marijuana activists, the elements of Prop 215 ended up being too vague. There were no specific uh, languages in that particular bill that uh, talked about dispensaries, how you would get it, how you would grow it, any limits, and so forth. So then, moving forward a couple of years, we had SB 420, and that basically allowed people to grow their own, give plant limits, and really give more specifics not only on what you could grow, but what conditions and what the caregiver's role was. So that was SB 420. But even with SB 420 in place, some people in California don't think the laws and regulations are enough. I have an industry in my county an industry, and this county is not unique, that is unregulated and untaxed. Instead, many in California look to Colorado as the state that got it right. Colorado is allowed to sell and distribute for profit. That's not even allowed in California. The government and the Department of Revenue tracks everything from seed to sale. But the best thing about Colorado and why it works so well is it's a for-profit state. In fact, people who work in the medical marijuana industry in Colorado feel the for-profit mentality has helped their economy the most. We've brought jobs to Colorado. 
not only in this industry, in the growing industry, um, certainly the Department of Revenue, which is the overseer of this entire uh, medical marijuana here in Colorado, they've hired quite a few people. It's opened a completely new market with dot-com multiples. I mean, it's brought in investors, business owners, growers. I mean, people who have all these credentials that weren't allowed to use them before because it was considered so illegal. There was maybe 20 dispensaries in the whole state. Now there's over 400 in, around Denver alone. You know, it's, it's blown up huge. And if you're given the right to grow cannabis, sell it, make a profit, then you're happy. You know, to pay taxes is not a big deal. You can see as they have special features, paper dispensers built in. I mean, can't go wrong with that if you're in the stoner community. That was awesome. <laughs> no matter how good a state's marijuana laws are, all medical marijuana states must still deal with problems coming from the federal government. On October 7th, President Obama and four different attorney generals all got together and they announced a press conference that they were concerned because they felt like a lot of the medical marijuana dispensaries were basically a sham. The federal government is now going to do a little crackdown here in Colorado for any dispensaries that are within a thousand feet of a school. I'm just confused over the mixed messages that the U.S. government is sending out there. Is this legal if we're not within a thousand feet or is it still not legal and are we going to come up with some other reason to, to close us down? The new 1,000 feet rule has already shut down the oldest pot dispensary in the United States, the Marin Alliance in Fairfax, California. My landlord received a letter dated September 28th, called me on the 29th, said, what's this letter? I said, what letter? And apparently he was the first one to receive a letter from the U.S. attorneys claiming that he was being informed of illegal drug activity occurring on his property less than 1,000 feet from a school, park, or playground, and that he would be subject to 40 years in jail or forfeiture of his property unless he immediately evicted us. What's the difference between 15 years ago and now? That is a very good question, and that is 100% of what everybody wants to know is why, and I don't know. When I contacted the federal government to find out why, the Drug Enforcement Agency sent me to the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice then sent me to the White House's Office of National Drug Control Policy. The White House's Office of National Drug Control Policy then sent me to the National Institute for Drug Abuse. And then the National Institute for Drug Abuse then sent me to this guy, Dr. Herbert Cleaver, former deputy drug czar under President George H.W. Bush. I did not ask him about the thing on his nose. Why well, they can't speak for the federal government? Oh, they want you to speak. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's nice of you. You know, my concern is if you legalize it, more will do it. That is, you will have as many dependent people, perhaps, as nicotine or alcohol. Contrary to what the pro-marijuana group argues, that there is no marijuana withdrawal. There is a very distinct physical withdrawal from marijuana. However, other former federal officials feel the most recent medical marijuana crackdown came for another reason. Money. Most people in Washington realize the war on drugs is not winnable, but it's eminently fundable, and people in Washington are addicted to the drug war funding. There's massive bureaucracies that uh, exist only because of that money, and they know that if prohibition ends, they go away. And it's an amazing partnership between the good guys and the bad guys. Now, it's clear that big-time drug dealers are making a whole bunch of money, and their vested interest is continuing with drug prohibition. But it's also the same thing with regard to law enforcement. Sure enough, even prominent people in the medical marijuana industry agree. I've been arrested by the DEA. They've come to my house in Oakland, and so has the Treasury Department because the Treasury Department wants the money that's associated with medical marijuana. They don't care about the weed or the illegality of it. They're just concerned about the taxation. That's the United States. It's the way it's always worked. It's just that because you can't figure out how to take the money, you, you, you shut the industry down, but you're going to send it back into the street. So now you have this incredible influx of criminality. Where did the patients go? They went back to the underground. They went back to the drug thugs. They went back to the cartels, you know, and, and that's where the millions of dollars is. But that's not America. You know, that is not the future of America, at least I hope not, because if they're going to break the Constitution over marijuana, the Constitution is broken. Ah, the Constitution. According to many of the people I talked to, the medical marijuana issue actually brings up important questions about our type of government. Invariably what happens is we come back to 
uh, the fundamentals of our system of government and what it's supposed to do. In the case of uh, California, you have uh, a proposition law that was passed by the people of the state of California. But then you have the Supremacy Clause of the United States Constitution, the federal government that does not recognize medical marijuana. It says marijuana is a uh, class one uh, drug. So you have two sovereigns, one jurisdiction, the state of California, two completely different rules. How did we prohibit alcohol in this country when we implemented the prohibition of alcohol? How did we do it? We passed an amendment to the Constitution. Why didn't they pass an amendment to the Constitution when we outlawed drugs in this country? Every time we have a problem, we want to go to war against that problem. The drug wars is, is reprehensible, and the war on marijuana is a war on the people. And I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to stop the pot war. I think it's legitimate for people uh, to ask um, whether government should in fact criminalize responsible adult behavior. To me, it seems we've gone, um, I think the expression is bass backwards. And um, I think that I would like to see policies that are based on reason. Fortunately, with marijuana activists in New York looking to lobby Republican state senators and governors of medical marijuana states petitioning the White House to reschedule marijuana, states can now design their own policies based on reason to answer the medical marijuana question. The answer is regulate marijuana like wine. And we have an initiative that we're trying to put on the ballot in November of 2012 called Just That. But it contains a provision that prohibits anyone who works with or for the state of California or any city or county to assist the federal government in enforcing federal law if it conflicts with state law. So we'll look at the federal government and say, we understand you have the supremacy clause, but if you're going to enforce these stupid laws, you're going to have to do it by yourself. I think it's up to the electorate. I mean, if they get these referenda on a ballot, um, then it'll be a question of whether uh, Americans decide to vote for it. Regulate marijuana like wine will be historic, and I guarantee you or anyone listening to us, within two or three years after it passes in California, it will work, it will sweep the country, and then everybody will link hands and look back and be aghast that we could have perpetuated such a failed system for so long. I wish I had some pain. When's the last time you gave up something pleasurable? Every day. <laughs> okay. Every day, I give it up. What do you guys think about them trying to legalize medical marijuana? I, I love it. Awesome. Yo, I fucking love up. that shit. Let's go. go. Government can tax that. You have no conversation. One of the things you sometimes hear from the pro marijuana group is look, George Washington grew hemp. I'm smoking weed and I get money. Make millions by legal and legal idea. Except for I spend our money on weed. But we know there's some paper. Um, stop, stop the press for a minute. Um, I will find that shortly. Um, you missed the key point, damn it. Yeah. <laughs>